coordinator, Chad Scott. Questions for Coach Scott. This is, Chad sort of had this, asked this of others, but what don't you know until you play a game? What don't I know until they, uh, we play the game? Well, how the guys going to come out and react? You know, we've been playing against each other now for almost a month. And so, you know, you get guys that, are, you know, get all nerved up and, you know, and, you know, just, you know, in terms of, you know, how they going to go out, particularly some young guys, some new guys, transfer guys we got in, just going to have them guys going to go out and respond, you know, right away in game-like situations. And obviously, you know, you, uh, things you don't know, you know, we know what we know based off what we've seen off film, but we have all had a lot of time to prepare, you know. So uh, when you get a lot of time to prepare, you got a lot of different, you know, minds that come up with different things. So a lot of things you don't know either is what you, you know, think you know what you're going to see, but you also go out there and see some adjustments, some things that you hadn't seen as well. Any experience against Manny Diaz? Uh, I have uh, I have experience from from playing at uh, Troy uh, back in like 2000, I think. So. Seven, some yeah. So I don't, not, not, not a lot of recollection. No. <laughs> yeah. So, but style wise and what he's going to do defensively, pressure wise, things like that. I mean, that's kind of been a staple with him through his career. Yeah, it has it has, and uh, we've had a lot, you know, a lot of time to prepare for it. Obviously, uh, you know, it's, you know, when you look at the season from last year, they presented something differently every game. Uh, they differ from what they were when they started the season to what they finished the season, and and so we can expect, you know, you know, to see something different at least early on. Obviously, you know. People are who they are, so you know. Eventually, they'll get back to their base and things that we have prepared for. But we can expect to definitely see something different than what we've seen thus far. How much do you uh, preoccupy? I mean, obviously, when you study them, you're going to look at what you see and you work off that. Right. Then, how much enters your mind about things that they can do off of that? Do you preoccupy your mind with that a lot, or do you just worry about what you see and then adjust as you go? You just worry about what you see and adjust as you go because. You know, we got to do what we're good at first off. And, uh, you know, we can't – you know, we show the guys, you know, what we've seen and, you know, the things that we've seen multiple times uh, from what they've shown. But the, uh, the the best thing we can do is be great at what we're great at and, you know, and, and match the things that we're great at and then see all the things that they've shown us multiple times and, and make sure that the things that we're good at works well against whatever it is they're going to bring, bring to us. So it's a lot of unknown, but, you know uh, – Best thing we can do is stick with what we're great at. So they just lost talk about four running backs this camp and how well they've played. Can mm -hmm. you get four guys touches in a game? Well, you know, you, when you got a uh, initial, you, you like to say no, but you know, when you come out, you know, first first game with the jitters and the, uh, you know, just anxiety of going out there and playing. You know, you may get some guys that may be fatigued early on, and I want to do a great job keeping those guys fresh. You know, we got some, you know, got a good mixture of, you know, big guys and some smaller guys. So it's going to be critical for me to keep those guys fresh so we can always, so we get the best version of each and every last one of them. And uh, obviously, you know, one of them gets hot, gets going, and, you know, adrenaline gets rolling. You know, we'll, we'll stick with that hot hand. But, uh, you know, like I said, initially you say no. But the good thing about us is, uh, you know, they're versatile in what they can do. And so it, it's, you know, it's opportunities for those guys to get the ball in their hands without just handing it to them as well. You study them, obviously, they've got good players at all three levels. Mm -hmm. Is there one area when you guys turn on a tape and go, whoa? Yeah, third down and long. We want to stay out of those situations. <laughs> yeah, third and long, we say, whoa. So we want to stay out of those situations, obviously. And we got to be, and that's what we've been emphasizing as well. You know, we, we go back, we've had a good fall camp, and I think one of the things, I'm going to say, I think, I, I know one of the things that we've done a great job is looking at what, you know, we weren't good at in the past, which is, you know, being good on first downs to start, you know, being one of them. And uh, we put a major emphasis on that and starting fast and being efficient on, you know, P and 10 and first downs to stay out of those negative situations. So we don't say, well, and we're in a position where we can be more effective. Who are some of the key players that stand out for you on, on their defense? On their there's a bunch. But. Uh, key players, I mean, they got a good team across the board. Uh, Key players for us being a running back coach, you know, we always pay attention to the backers. Uh, so uh, they got a really good linebacking crew. They've experienced, experienced guys and played a lot of football. And obviously, you know, like I was talking about the third long situation. So the two, the two guys on the edge, you know, uh, really good football players as well. So, you know, well coached bunch, talented bunch. 
be a great opportunity for us to go out and you know be the best, put our best version of ourselves out there as well. You mentioned you mentioned good players, and I've asked, I'll ask <laughs> you. Um, Feldman had his freak list, and he had six of the Penn State guys on there. Yeah. Most teams get one or two. Right. They had six, and I asked Jordan, and he introduced another guy. So you're up to seven now. Is yeah. there is there one guy on that team that you're like, wow? Uh, Again, paying attention to guys, we pay attention to the 44, uh, number 44 that comes off the edge on third and eight. It, yeah, he he's a blur out the edge. So we definitely want to stay out of those third and long situations. And number 11 is a really good football player as well on the second level. Uh, does a great job of, you know, avoiding blocks and plays really well, you know, downhill and sideline to sideline. Does a great job blitzing as well. So, you know. Well, so you're up to eight now. Yeah. The good thing for us, man, you know, we, we've had, uh, you know, playing against guys like Lee Cobra every day. You know, we've, you know, it's a great thing for us when we're able to go, you know, and practice against the players that we got as well to give us opportunity to, to see that kind of speed and that kind of physicality every day. Yeah, there, there's an opportunity, though. You look at it the other way. Um, NBC's anticipating this having a huge viewership. Mm -hmm. You're in prime time. Is that something you sell to your guys? Hey, look, you're going to be – playing in front of maybe the biggest crowd possibly in Penn State history, mm -hmm. eyeballs. Does that you, – you play that up with the guys? No, we hadn't. We hadn't really. Uh, you know, because we've had – a lot of the guys that we have right now, you know, we've been in front of that, uh, that prime time. You know, last year with the opener against uh, Pitt and then, you know, Virginia Tech openers, I mean, on Thursday night. And so uh, a lot of guys, we, we've had that. More so just, you know, being great at what we've been great at. We're a great football team, too, and it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to go out and, you know, and show the best version of us. But, uh, you know, we've done a great job, particularly today, uh, you know, putting the guys in a, you know, a game like atmosphere. You know, we stayed in the indoor today and closed all the doors. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in I'm over here right now. I mean, it was so loud in that, in that indoor facility. But, you know, we put those guys in that kind of environment so they can kind of get as, you know, just of what it's going to be like then. And, and I think we did a great job with it today. So we continue to do that. From last year, I know you, you, your approach this uh, camp has been to be more physical than you were last year. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, there may have been reasons because of the numbers and whatnot. Right. But is there any carryover to getting prepared for a game like this right off the bat? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's carryover. Like carryover more so like in, you know, like basically like simulating the uh, – I think we Coach Brown's done a great job, you know, We've had scrimmages where we've scrimmaged under the lights, you know, like that kind of deal. We're putting those guys in those kind of situations and, you know, having to go throughout the entire day of uh, like meetings and, you know, a little downtime, you know, so that, you know, the Saturday, upcoming Saturday isn't the first time they experience waking up in the morning and doing the walkthrough and having, you know, some uh, downtime in between time and getting back up and doing pregame meals. So we've done a great job of, you know, having simulated mock days, not just this previous Saturday, but uh, I think two previous days prior to then, putting those guys through that particular day. So first time they do it won't be Saturday. And I think and I think that's beneficial, particularly for these young guys. These young guys coming out of high school, even some of these uh, you know, transfer guys, just not necessarily knowing how to go through that deal. That's that's something to put those guys through because they, uh, they talk about it even when we do it, that it's, it's a long day. And so we've done it a couple times now. They some, somewhat got used to it. Going what? How much is the emphasis on going for, for, for fourth, fourth down? Fourth down, change offensive philosophies. And what's most important about fourth down plays now? Converting it. <laughs> That's the most important part, converting it. It, it has changed, uh, you know, it, it has changed uh, the, like the offensive philosophy now. You can be more aggressive. Uh, you can be more aggressive up going forward. You know, a lot of the offenses are a lot more explosive. I mean, you got to be able to score touchdowns. And so, you know, obviously you got to convert it and you know what to expect. And guys got to be, we always say when, you know, it's got to be scrupulous and situational play, which is extreme attention to detail. And when talent is equal, technique wins. You're probably going to get one-on-one -on -one situation and cover one. and got to win your one-on-one -on -one battles using technique. What about the emphasis on first down maybe that used to, you used to like to get five or six or seven, where you can now, you know, get three probably. Now, I wouldn't say with less emphasis on the first down. We still want to be effective, uh, efficient on first down. You know, you could be more as, a, you know, when you call them plays, you could be, you know, a lot more relaxed. And when it's third down, knowing that you got another play to call, typically, you know, if it's third and long, you know, ideally you like to call a play, pass play or, you know, a you know a design touch play, so to speak, where you can get the ball in the hands of somebody that's dynamic with the ball in the hand underneath to get that particular first. But if you know you got two downs, 
you know, you don't have to be as aggressive. You might want to, you could probably call one of your open field run game plays, knowing that you may get, you know, four or five and comfortable with, you know, getting, you know, it being fourth and four, fourth and three, you know. The defense moved into a mindset of being more physical from spring ball to ball. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily done for the offense because they wanted to make the defense better, but what has that actually done for the offense? Has that indirectly also been a blessing to these guys? It's been guys? huge. For, it's been huge for us, man, because. You know, defense, they're, they're aggressive for a lot of reasons, man, mainly so to, to confuse the quarterbacks, you know, and, and uh, confuse receivers, confuse backs in terms of all the different combo coverages and all the different ways they can disguise and and uh, show different blitzes, you know. And, and so it's been beneficial for us big time because it's put our quarterbacks in stressful situations that you won't normally see until game day. That's really, like, help those guys make decisions. And, and then and even days where they've made bad decisions, help those guys go and watch film and learn from what they – the mistakes they made and come back and bounce back. It's helped, you know, the running backs, the old line in terms of their communication because when you get that kind of pressure and, you know, they simulating pressures, you got to be on the same page in, their, as regard, in regards to communication. So that, that's been very beneficial for them as well, but also for us, too, to see those, those game-like defenses in practice situations. I really, I, I do, I really do. I mean, I think those guys, left tackle to right tackle, is really taking ownership of, of, of just not even just their room, just his offense in terms of their whole, their entire mentality. I mean, the, the communication back and forth between those guys and the backs and the chemistry that they have, and you know, I really think we've taken that next step forward simply because of the, the mentality and the mindset those guys have up front from the left tackle to right tackle. And I told those guys, and I told the whole offense this: those guys are the nucleus of this this offense attack. I mean, they're uh, the most experienced group uh, coming back. We've got their starter back from left tackle to right tackle. They've had a phenomenal spring, summer, and fall camp. But I really do think, though, the chemistry between those guys and those running backs. I mean, just from an accountability standpoint, you know, it might be, a, you know, a running back might miss a read, and they got the respect to one another to be able to call each other out and, and you know, not feel it any kind of way, vice versa, if they, they were to miss a block. And I think that kind of relationship, man, is important so they can all see, you know, what the running back's looking at, you know, what the O-line, who the O-line is working towards. So I think we taking the next step in the run game because of that. And we've had situations in practice where, you know, we've said we're going to run the football. We, this is a period where we're just going to run the football. And, you know, great teams to me, you know, are teams that can go out and run a football when teams know you have to run the football. And thus far through our camp, we've done that. The, the clock rule uh, came into effect in week zero. I think there were fewer plays yeah. at, on average. Mm -hmm. Have you guys talked a lot about that um, amongst yourselves or amongst the guys? We have every single day. And, and we've worked it every day. And one of the things that we've done to, to help ourselves in regards to that is hand the ball to the official. And it's a daily, it's a daily challenge. It's a daily challenge, particularly for the guys that catch the ball on the perimeter, and even for the running backs or whoever carries the football to, to run the ball outside to the perimeter to run that ball all the way back to the uh, the innermost official to try to help us play that much faster. I was going to say because on statistically you're looking at maybe five to ten fewer plays. Yeah, five to ten, more, yeah, and that's what they're looking for, you know. So if you get the first down and the and you're on the sideline and you hand the ball to the sideline official, and so when he tosses the ball, not even when the innermost official catches it, when he tosses it, the clock's supposed to start. So we want to try to run that ball back in and give us a slight uh, advantage. end of that, and I, I read Mike Gundy talking about this, uh, teams that can run the ball could be really beneficial, particularly when you get to the fourth quarter before the clock stops. Mm -hmm. You can burn off a lot of time if you're an effective run team. Absolutely. That's, that's a huge advantage if you're effective run team, which we expect to be. Is that something yeah. that, though, in the back of your mind you thought about, though, that, hey, if we, can, if we can do this, if we can run, this could really, really help us? We and have. I guess, too, the depth mm -hmm. thing because, mm -hmm. you know, fewer plays, it, it doesn't eat up your depth as much possibly. Right. So this could be – you see some opportunities. I do see some – we had a situational scrimmage and we emphasized that and it was an actual situation scrimmage where we talked about the two men and we did the two men and we did the four men and we emphasized that a lot. You know, if we can be effective running the football, the clock is actually helps us. It's, it's to our advantage. Hey, Jeff, you said something about their defense that you just naturally kind of have an idea of what they might want to do and what they'll get into sometimes. But also, they change a lot and that you could see something totally new. Right. They may change throughout the game. So there's some jabbing going on there. Mm -hmm. um, maybe script isn't the right word, right word, but you guys certainly want to orchestrate some things offensively that you do to get going. Right. That's kind of like a weird tango here. Um, just how do you prepare to navigate that you know, between you and Sean and you and Neil, just trying to figure out that you're not you're not getting pulled into a trap that maybe 
you know, that, that what you saw might not be there. So right. let's not abandon this. Right. Very convoluted question, but that's kind of my point here. There's, there's a lot going on between the two booths up against mm-hmm. that first, you know, two series first quarter. Right. Well, you know, between uh, between the three of us and Coach Brown and uh, Coach Reagan, they probably uh, face Coach Diaz a lot more than I have. So, you know, with the familiar, familiarity that they have with him and I have with him and all the information we got between all of us and the film and the video, even if they do something new, they, it won't it won't stray off too much from, you know, what he's accustomed to doing. And the, the plays that we have right now, they're, they're pretty much universal in, in regards to anything that they may throw at us. You know, uh, the biggest thing is just for, uh, you know, if we get any kind of adjustment, we've got to fix it right away. But the plays that we have right now, at least in particular to start the football game, are, are plays that are pretty universal that are, we feel like it has a good, at least about a 90% success rate versus whatever they can throw at us from a fish standpoint, being able to get at least four plus yards. Go in this with an idea of how much do you see, Jay, either a, a maximum or a minimum of what you want to snap count, touches? Yeah, I don't really have a, uh, you know, ideally, you know, I would, I love for them to get, uh, you know, 15, 15 plus touches, 15 plus touches. Uh, he's going to play. We're going to let him roll. I mean, they're going to roll. As long as he stay fresh, you know, and he he's done a good job here uh, over the last uh, half of the fall camp of, you know, being able to play multiple plays consecutively, particularly after running, you know, you know, run the run the ball two three times. So uh, hopefully, you know, ideally, we'd love for him to touch the ball fifteen plus times. Okay. Anything else for Coach Scott? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you all.